Welcome back everyone, welcome back to Let's Play UFO Extraterrestrials. We're defending our base, yes again, our main base from the aliens, and what happened to, uh, Bebos here? Huh, okay. He, uh, he actually got hurt. Oh yeah, I think he got one shot by that drone thing, right? And we have a chaser here saying hello. That's quite, uh, something. How about we say hello back? Should only take one shot. Excellent. Alright, that's good. Alright, let's uh, open the doors. Make sure there's nothing else over here. That's a lot of chasers. Yeah, that sure is a lot of chasers. Let's get back. Kinda like that sound. Anyone there? No. Anyone there? No. You guys have uh, pretty nice... Pretty nice uh, job over there. Not really doing much. Well, if you call that nice, of course. Right, and we have Jezdemol, um guarding that door because if you remember a big drone or something uh, crept up right on top of us. There it is, actually. That's the destroyed drone. <laughs> that was quite bizarre. Oh, bloody hell. Mocha over here has, uh, has another drone he has to take care of. Come on. Bloody hell. Oof. That's good. These things really creep up on you for some reason. Somehow. <clears throat> right, there's nothing going on over here. And there's nothing going on over here. You're gonna go back in. Because it's dangerous out there. There be dragons. <clears throat> Excuse me. A dragon. Let's see. Well, we've already checked this area. But we're gonna go over here. Okay, that's this area. And there's nothing going on here. Nothing. The good doctor is hiding over there. We could check this area, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get you back. I don't like being out in the uh, out in the open. Not now. With these nasty things around. Man, I have a lot of these things. Uh, Mr. El Ninja and Alexandrinus. And of course, we only get one tank because of the bloody thing. Because it only lets you have that many people um, on a base defense. It really sucks. But oh well. Hello? No? Okay. That's fine. Well, all the walls are intact over here still. And, I mean, judging by the sound, it was really coming from somewhere over there. But of course... I don't know if that's actually tr the truth or not. I don't know if the mechanics actually work that way. You know, that in uh, on the alien hidden turn, you actually can hear where the sounds are coming from. Uh, hello there. We are going to do an auto shot on you. Even the one shot was enough, but you never know. It might not have been. Well, Dragon 7, you've just destroyed the wall and the doors over there and everything. Jeez, don't be such a vandal. Right, let's just check over here again. Nobody, okay. It's, uh, it's quite dangerous now, these things. we got to be careful. We've got really good armor, of course, and everything, and really good weapons, but... Oh, uh, uh, bloody hell. Hello, Jezdemel says hello. Wait, that was over here. Interesting sound, though, when they move. Boop. Right, take it out. Bang. 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 Hopefully it's uh, not going to shoot back. Good. All right. See? <clears throat> that thing also wanted to creep up on our people over there. Man, creepy. I do wonder what the uh, research will say about them, though. Nothing going on over there. We could get Mocha over here, really. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff we haven't checked yet, but I just rather have them walked over to us instead of uh, us walking to them and possibly getting shot. You will be shot on the spot. Right, what about this part of the map here? Hmm, I don't like going out. I really don't like doing that. Hmm, nothing so far though, so... Hmm, let's go back, the good doctor. Let's check this area. 
Yawaris, one of our, well, sort of rookies. Nothing. That could have been the one, the last one, you know. I haven't checked this site at all. So probably, oh, that was it. Babus was wounded by a trilobite. Okay, that's an odd name for uh, those drones. Mocha is now a sergeant and Yawaris is now a corporal first class. Very nice. Okay, so there we go. You have all of that uh, maxed already, so you can have more health. Let's get your shooting back. There we go. Very nice. Alright, what are we researching? <clears throat> Engines. Trilobite, Viper Commander. There is so much to research in this game. I love it. Alright, let's see. <clears throat> oh. A ship of Centaurus' size and mass requires an ext and extremely strong gravitational engine propulsion in order to render it capable of interstellar travel. In order to meet these requirements, we redesigned the original concept behind alien engines and made them more efficient and reliable, and therefore suitable to our purposes. First, it was necessary to increase the Avonium Chamber's supply capacity, in order to allow increased Avonium retention and intensity... Uh, intensify gravitation wave generation. In order to ensure sustained hadron generation, particularly in circumstances of heavy space distortion, we had to insert an additional stabilization hadron buffer into the output injector. This solution required further redesigning of the hadron filter control system as, uh, so as to increase its reliability. As a result of all our adjustments, we have gained an extraordinarily reliable and powerful gravitational engine, which not only meets all intentional, uh, international space vessel safety and quality requirements, but even exceeds them. When this war is over and the aliens are at last defeated, Centaurus's class... Why is there an apostrophe here? Centaurus class... Oh, Centaurus's class of ships will be certainly... Will be certainly remain the primary means of exploring unknown parts of the universe. Well, that's interesting. One and a half million! <laughs> Production difficulty nightmare. <laughs> Alright, let's do the trilobite. I'm just wondering what this thing is. There uh, we go. Yeah, I really don't have the money for stuff like this. I'm still making another Nightwolf. I'm actually struggling for money now. Uh, right, we've finished the Nightwolf. So now we can proceed making these things. Landing storage. Let's also make another one. Uh, laboratory for now. And distribution point. Man, that's gonna cost us. Yeah, just one unit. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Oh, I have more. Okay. That's fine. There we go. <clears throat> About two days for everything. Money's gonna... Oh! Okay, it automatically deducts money. That's fair enough. Oh, wait a second. I have this uh, fighter. Thunderbolt launcher. Ah, oh, no weapon. Crap. I have to make another one then. Um, a Q cannon. Don't we have some spare? I really need some spare stuff now, because I'm struggling for money. Let's see. Uh, no, Iron Cannon. I guess Iron Cannon would be fine. Let's just bring this Iron Cannon over there. What about any other base? Well, there's an acute Cannon here, but don't they need it? Ah, fine, for now this will be it. And we're already in the minus now. Alright, let's get that iron cannon up. There we go. Excellent, very good, blah blah. Excellent, just uh, the money I need right now. Can we sell some artifacts? Yes, we can. There we go. Can I sell anything else? Not really that much, unfortunately. Um, lots of eel rifles. I'm gonna sell some of those. Lots of defense grenades, for some reason I still have these. Stun grenade mark 1, don't need it. I've got stun grenades mark 2 now. Stim packs, loads of stim packs. Water dock. Desert rats, don't really need them. Beekeeper 1, I'm gonna sell that. Desert spirit, gonna sell that, don't need it. Okay. Lots of iron shields and everything. Alien Artifact. Still more Artifacts. There we go. Research of Trilobite has been completed. 
Now that looks quite interesting. Trilobite is an alien heavy offense unit. It is in principle a small UFO of an average of 3 meters in diameter. It is armored with thick, well-formed plates made of alien alloys. Only our heaviest weapons have a real chance to penetrate such armor. Ordin ordinary gunfire does, not har uh, does no harm to it. During tests it was proven that chemical weapons confirmed have the ability to damage heavy alien armors. What? But a significant concentration of energy is necessary. Flammable weapons don't cause any greater damage. The strongest materials have the uh, threefold backup. Threefold backup. And that is why even penetrating the armor of a combat robot isn't sufficient to destroy it. Trilobite sensors for battlefield surveillance and precision aiming are located within a protective slit in the upper part of the trilobite's armor, which decreases its ability to detect and react to attacks. Trilobite has powerful fuel anti-gravity units. What? Powerful fuel anti-gravity units, okay. And therefore good acceleration and mobility. It also uses a powerful EU cannon. I thought that was our design. Oh no, wait, that's their design, obviously. Uh, because of its short barrel, we expected it not to be very accurate, and tests prove that it is not suitable for shooting long distance. Trilobite represents an almost perfect tank, and all the important factors of success on the terrestrial battlefield, gun power, resistance and mobility, it ranks superior. <clears throat> well, cheeky. Oh my god, EU shield even more. Holy crap. Long lance ship rockets. Engine injector. That's okay. Well, some uh, new ship stuff. It's fine. Ship shield, there we go. Ooh. A strong electromagnetic fuel generated by a plasma discharge of some EU weapons turned out to have a shield-like quality when adjusted to a certain level. During tests it reliably endured the... Uh, Endured, diverted, or at least weakened most of the existing energy shots. Therefore, the EU technology has been modified to give birth to the EU shield, designated to protection of smaller ships against enemy firepower. The shield is de designed to be placed in the middle of a ship uh, predetermined for use in conjunction with this technology. The device's body is composed of a sphere-shaped chamber with a plasma injector. When activated, a massive ball of rotating plasma is generated in the middle of the device, forming a central core field that is further spread by a system of canals throughout the host ship and emit it into a buffer zone surrounding the immediate area around the ship. The enemy fire is then crushed on the shield without the slightest chance to harm the ship or its crew. Yes, sure, because, you know, it's got unlimited armor. No, it doesn't. It's quite a bit better than the iron shield, though, that's true. Long lance. Um, I don't have the money for all this. I'm just going to go for a space flight computer and all that. Oh, personal EU shield as well. Lots of EU stuff. Right, uh, well, I'm still making this. Landing and storage is completed. There we go. Man, I still got so much to do. Wait, I've only done two things? Really? Jeez. Right, um... Where's the EU shields? Okay, how many do I actually need? Let's see. Wait. Uh, yes. Distribution. Uh, right, let's see. I need one, two, three, four, five. Oh, six, seven. That's all I have? Bloody hell, they destroyed many. Seven EU shield. Oh my god, they're expensive. Well, I do have the money for it, but... Man. Horribly expensive, these things. Right, let's see. There we go. Distribution point is complete. Lots of stuff still needs to be researched. Laboratory is finished. There we go. So now what else to do? Well, another Night Wolf would be good. Not enough free hangers, of course. Um, well, I can do the engine, but that will take loads of money. Alright. Let's go. You have a space flight computer. Ugh. Ugh, that's an eye. What the hell? Alien vessels capable of interstellar travel are, are, are invariably equipped with a special molecular mainframe called the UFO Spaceflight Computer. These devices, used for both navigation and control of the gravitational hyperdrive engines, are biomechanical hybrids. They are produced by controlled mutation and cultivation of lab-grown brain tissue. Various systems are connected to a fully grown ship computer, not unlike sensors to the human brain. Example, gravitational hyperdrive engines, onboard scanners, cameras, radio 
radiation sensors, the computer's own eye, etc. The brain possesses considerable intelligence, as well as the ability of fast learning and vocal interaction with the crew. Its vast memory contains a huge 3D space map of yet unknown extent that allows for virtually immediate location recognition provided by super-fast real-time comparison. In hyperspace, the orientation is enabled by tracking the relict radiation, which is basically like compass navigation. In operation, the brain receives and processes queries. When a demand for a space voyage is received, the brain makes sure the most efficient route is calculated and takes over the hyperdrive engine's controls. Then, by a delicate and accurate employment of the engines, a hyperspace window is formed and further sustained for the ship to be able to pass through. We assume that without the computing power of this device, the aliens would not be able uh, would not be capable of effective space travel. Ugh. So that's what we need to do. Man, even more! Jack D1 Interceptor! <gasps> A new Interceptor. I do like the sound of that, even though I don't have the money for it. There is so much stuff, I will say it again. There is so much stuff! <clears throat> Let's transfer this one somewhere. Peloponnesia, for example. Send. Oh yeah. An Iron Shield. It doesn't seem to cost anything. <clears throat> Give me that interceptor. Avonium mining. Unknown. Wait, what was it? Tech equipped. Ew. Ah, it even tells you the tech. I never actually saw it. Okay, Patreon main base. Oh. Patreon. Oh. That's all we have. That's not really good. Should be enough, though. Oh, well, that was quick. <clears throat> Transfer of items is complete. Well, now we have a lot of stuff over here. A cube. That's a lot of stuff. And what else did they bring? Iron shield, right? No, EU shield. There we go. Man, that's a lot of stuff. Wait, what happened? Were my interceptors out then? No, I just don't have a lot of them here. That really sucks. Alright, give me that uh, stuff. Avonia mining. Plasma. <laughs> uh, Peloponnesia, that's perfect. Most of my stuff is there. Yeah, that's a, quite a bit more health, but there's so much space over here. Can I do that? Can I get even more? Bang! That was lovely. The problem is, the new shields just give you more health. They don't seem to give you more armor or anything. Right, so now I'm researching this still. Oh my god, that's... Oh, it's paused. This uses money as well. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, bloody hell. I need more money. I really need more money. I could sell an order dog. Or some of these. Look at that. Look at that money. 1,200. Amazing. Energy shield. Oh, iron shield. Let's sell some of these, even though I'll probably regret it. Some artifacts. Um. Desert spit. Why didn't didn't I not sell that? There we go. Desert viper. Blah blah blah. Stasis grenade. EU rifle. Iron pistol. Where the hell is this from? I can sell that as well. Stun rod ammo. Stun rocket. Right. Well, it's not much, but it's something. Wait. I'm going to pause this production. And just do this, I guess. Even though that's going to be eating through my money as well. Yep, there we go. And it's already paused. That's not good. Abductions. Iron technology. I could wait for this guy to land and then get it, but... I think I'm just gonna shoot it down. Avonium mining. Particle. Particle? What the hell is that? I'm going to wait for these guys to land, I think. Should I? Where's it going? There it is. Right. Intercept. Particle. Is that something even crazier than eel? Oh, man. Should I bring a tank with me? That's the question. The answer is probably not. Um, 
Right, there we go. I think we're all ready. Wait, why don't you have the proper armor? Oh, there's none available. That's not good. Well, let's launch. And see what this is all about. And boom! Begin the mission. Alright. Particle technology. This is something new. I don't think we've had that before. And I guess it's gonna be even better than EO, so these guys are gonna be extremely nasty. And we'll have to be very, very careful. Interesting. Well, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.